Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Epic Games are at it again. They just released the last batch of assets from Paragon. Now, if you've never heard of it, Paragon was a competitive shooter, tried to be an esports game, a lot like Overwatch, but then, while well, Overwatch happened. They kind of had really bad timing, and so they sort of pulled the plug and rededicated their assets towards the development of Fortnite. Considering the massive amounts of money that Fortnite is making right now, then it wasn't a bad decision. But basically, Paragon suffered an early death. Now, Epic did a very cool thing and basically refunded everyone that had spent any money on Paragon. So, um, yeah, that was a solid. And then on top of that, they turned around and actually started releasing the assets for free. In fact, uh, how long ago were we talking here? Back in March, they released $12 million, $12 million for, from their development cost perspective worth of Paragon assets, a number of characters and environments, etc. Then they did another release, and today they did the final round. So the last of the characters from Paragon are now available for download. Today we're going to look at how you can actually import them, how to use them, what they are, what they contain, and that kind of stuff. So there's a blog post, of course, we'll toss this down below, but they released 19 characters. I never played the game, so I know, have no idea how to pronounce any of these names, other than Aurora, Drongo, Gideon, Greystone, Iggy, and Scorch, Calaria, Lieutenant, Bellica, Morgiesh, Narbash, Revenant, Sparrow, Steel, Sun Wukong, Terra, The Fae, Wraith, Yin, Zinx, and Boris were all just released in this patch. Uh, so, oh, sorry, in this release. You see here? There they are. Um, and to actually go ahead and grab them, you just fire up your own version of the Epic Game Launcher. Go down to the marketplace, like so. Do a search for Paragon. Uh, Paragon. Like this. Enter. And then what you will get is the new characters, all those ones they've just added. For example, I went ahead and grabbed Drongo to add one of these, and I'm not going to do this in real time because these files are absolutely freaking huge. Just add it to your cart. It's completely free, so don't worry about that. Purchase your cart, and then they will be available in your library. Create your game, and then when you've got it created and ready to go, basically just say, Add to project, and then you pick the project you wish to add that character to. And then sit back and wait for your computer to stop smoking, because it's a two plus gigabyte assets. There are something like 1800 shaders to compile. It's gonna take some time, but you're getting more than just an asset here. So I've gone ahead and I've added, uh, what is it, Drongo to a standard third person game. Here you can see him, a very detailed character, but it's not just a character. So here you see, by the way, where they are actually supported. So you go into your content, you will see now a new folder off the root, Paragon Drongo, or whichever asset you brought in. Drill down into that, you see there's audio effects, characters, and effects for these guys. Go into character, go to heroes, go to Drongo, grab the Drongo player character and drop him in your world. And you didn't just import an asset here, it's not just a model, it is a full-blown rig. So we come up here to blueprints, and you can see uh, da da da, open blueprint class, Drongo player character, and here you can see all of the things involved in Drongo. So you've got the, the code that is controlling him, the, the things driving him around in the world. You got the capsule component, of course you've got the mesh in there, so we can go into the mesh, you see the mesh defined right here. We can click that guy to open it up in the editor. There is the high definition model. And once again, I did mention this is two gigs in size. So there are a huge amount of textures attached to this guy. And then of course, you've got your animations as well. So we got all these various different animations available. So we, here's the bazooka equip animation, for example. Let's find just a standard walk cycle. Here, let's go walk, oh, run. I don't know, there's gotta be some kind of a movement. Ah, death. We'll play as death animation. So boom, there you go. So that is part of what you get. There's a huge amount in with each one of these assets. There's all of the scripts that go together to control them, the camera, the logic, the blueprints, the textures, the animations, everything you could possibly want is there for each one of these characters. So what exactly is this good for? Well, the number one thing is asset flips. And I'm not recommending that, but this is a straightforward. If you wanted to have a new character for your game and you expect that nobody has ever played Paragon, you're gonna to expect to see all of these characters and all of the other ones and all of the resources you've already seen start showing up in Unreal Engine based asset flips. But at the same time, you can also look at this as how do the pros do it? This is a true AAA caliber game. This is how the assets are made. This is the fidelity of the assets. These are the contents of the assets. So obviously you can get a peek behind how a studio like Epic Games 
James goes ahead and makes their games. You can also use these as placeholders in your own game. Um, you could probably repurpose some of the animations into your own game for sure. I suppose you could use the character, but using the characters as is is really going to look asset flippy. Now it comes down to what is the license here. I'm going to get the question, and I get this question every single time. Can I use this in X, where X is Unity or Godot or any game engine that's not called Unreal Engine? And the answer is no. You can do what you want with these guys. The license is very liberal, but it is Unreal Engine only. So you can only use these assets in Unreal Engine uh, derived products. So uh, if you're creating a game and you're using Unreal Engine, you have a whole lot more assets available to you. Are they going to be really useful in a real world environment? Like I said, mostly just for asset flippers, but there is a lot here you can learn from. And it's a cool move by Epic to make this stuff available. Um, I'd love to see more and more game developers with their games are defunct or done or not being sold or canceled or whatever to make their assets available, uh, you know, even if it just gives people a peek behind the curtain. So uh, this is the newly released assets available on the, uh, the Epic Game Store. As you saw, they're not that hard to get in. Just keep in mind, again, they're about two plus gigs in size each. The asset import process takes about 15 minutes on a reasonably modern computer, including all of the shader processing and everything else. And your computer will grind to a halt while you're doing it. So these are not small files by any definition of the word, but you do get to see custom animation, visual effects, their audio dialogues are also in there. And then we also have the environment and sample maps somewhere else. So you can actually just go ahead and you can create your own mod or version of Paragon at this point in time. And all the characters and models and assets and environments are available for you to play with. So you can take modding one step way further along and have all these ready to go characters in there. Or like I said, you can use this for modeling your own game or as a learning experience take them apart dissect them and see how other people use them so cool move by epic again i will toss all the links down below one to the asset store one to the blog itself and one to the video i did on the previous uh, asset release in case you're wondering what is in those other packs all right that's it for now i will talk to you all later goodbye